All right, welcome back everyone. Today we're going to take a look at some of my new favorite features of the new version 25 of Helix and some of the new key bindings that I found that could be productive for you as well. So let's jump right into it. First up, let's talk about a few new features in Helix version 25, which just came out recently. So first up, that would have to be the inline diagnostics. So if we take a look here at the code or at Helix, we are looking at a laptop's component. And if we go to line 16, or rather line 17 to my top left corner, you see that we have an error where we have misspelled the create signal function. So in previous versions before version 25, this error would happen and be rendered all the way to the top right corner and that will be all the way to the right of line 1 where my cursor is at. Okay, but instead now it's rendered in line. You can see on line 17 at the end of the line of the code you see expected one argument found 0. And if we move our cursor to line 70 or 17, notice that more information about this error gets rendered and pushes line 18 downwards. So essentially this inline error slash diagnostic is rendered in between the lines of your code. So you can see how useful this is, especially if you have a long S error message that if it was still rendering at the top right corner, It would block the first line of code or even the second line of code which I have just highlighted. Okay, and one nice thing about this inline diagnostics. So if we go to line 11, let's go to line 10 first. And if we move our cursor to line 11, notice that the line that is part of the inline diagnostics is rendered slightly different because it is aware of the width of your or rather in this case our terminal so you can see that it it's not a straight line it turns around it makes a left turn and goes down and makes a right turn before rendering the message or more information about the error itself so i really like this part about it now to get this new inline diagnostics which is not enabled by default in version 25. You do have to make two very small changes to your Helix config. So you can do that by doing colon C O. You can see that config open is at the top left corner and we can just do tap tap enter. And now we are in the Helix config, uh, which I will want to bring your attention to line five. So this is something new that you have to add, the end of line diagnostics and on line seven and eight as well. So adding these few lines would enable the new inline diagnostics to your Helix version 25. Another new feature is how Helix version 25 changed how its speakers look like. So for example, if we take a look at the buffer list or buffer picker by pressing space and B, you can see that for this picker on the left to my left, you can see that now there are column names at the top, which uh, it shows ID, flex, and path. So that's for buffer picker. Okay, but for far picker, you can see that because it's one column there hasn't been any change to it okay but one of my favorite new pickers is definitely the diagnostics picker so to go to that we would do a space small d so just space d and you can see all the diagnostics on the current file that you're looking at so you can see the three columns on the left you can see the severity the error code and the message itself. 
So I found this really, really helpful, especially the severity column, which tells you whether it's an error or a hint, for example. So this is really, really helpful. And if you want to check out the diagnostics picker for the entire workspace, you can do space shift D to, uh, so it's space plus big D, right? To take a look at all the diagnostics in your current workspace. So this is something that I found really, really useful as well. Next, we are going to go into some very useful key bindings that I personally found really helpful in making me a more productive and efficient engineer. First up, easily change your code or text to a different case. So for example, if you want to change the word add button style here to all uppercase because this is a constant and that is a good practice. A way to easily do so is to, of course, you have to first select it and to press shift plus tilde. So you can see now it all becomes uppercase. And of course, if you want to change it back, you just do the same thing. Shift plus tilde. So that becomes all lower case. So this is something that I use quite often as well, especially if you just want to change the first character of a word. So for example, I can do this and this and this and this. Yeah, so this is quite handful. And next, something that I do quite often, and that is to jump to a specific line number so for example right now we are at line nine if i say if let's say i want to modify and make some changes to the if show model read signal at line 13 i will type one three g and g to go to line 13 right away or rather to jump to line 13 right away so that is very useful as well and from here if for example if we want to just remove all the signals so that is all the way at line 17 and from line 13 we are around four lines away and what we can do is say hey i want to select the next few maybe four to five lines so to do that you can press five X. So you can see that we have selected the next four to five lines and to delete them, we can just press D and you can see that all the lines are gone. And of course, to undo what we just did, we can just press U. So that is really, really very helpful as well. So something that I use quite often in addition to, or rather in addition to jumping to a specific line number, is to jump to a specific point in your code. So to do that, you can do G, W, and you can see that the first two characters of each word in your code has been changed to a different color if you pay attention. And in addition to that, they have also been changed to two different characters. So say, for example, right now, if we want to jump to the on click event mouse event handler on line 21. Okay, but I want to change, I want to jump directly to the word on. So, which has been changed to the word by. So, I can just press B and Y. So, you notice that our cursor jumps directly over there. So, same thing if I want to jump back to say the team page. The name of the function here on line 9, once again I can do GWCR. So notice that we are back at team page. So using G plus W is very, very useful for jumping around your code. Another key binding that I found quite useful is renaming of symbols. So right now, for example, we are on line 22 where our cursor is on this set if show model right signal. So if we want to rename this, 
Okay, we can do space R. And instead of saying set if show model, we'll say maybe let's do shown model. Enter. And you can see that okay, it's not just where our cursor is at that has been renamed. You can see that our line 13. So if we do a jump to definition right now by pressing G, D, you can see that over here, it has been changed as well. So this is very, very useful if you need to make or change or replace all the, or rather the symbol and its references all at once. So it saves quite a bit of time as well. And next, this is something that you might find useful as well, especially if you need to wrap your text or words with quotes around them often. So for example, right now we have this line of code on line 15. So this is basically a line of Tailwind CSS code. You can see that starting from here, it's all just the styles, but we have not wrapped this line of code in quotes yet. Okay, but to easily do so, okay, what you need to do is to first select where you want the text to be wrapped around and do you can press M, S, and quotes. So that saves a lot of time as you do not have to manually go to the front and back to insert the wrapping quotes around your text or code. And next, this is somewhat related, but if you find yourself needing to change the code or content within a matching pair brackets, for example. So for example, take a look at our on-click mouse event handler on line 23, which I'm highlighting right now. So say for example, if we need to change or remove entirely the contents of the code here. So that will be essentially just line 24. So to do so, we can press M, I, M. And that would select whatever is in this on-click mouse event handler. So to prove, or rather to show you why this is important. So imagine if we have a lot of this set if show model, right, calling the right signal. So once again, if we do M, I, M, you can see that now we have selected everything within the wrapping parent brackets. And that is the bracket on line 34 and on. 23. So this is quite useful from time to time. And lastly, to replace your matching pair or parent bracket. So instead of pressing M, I, N, you can do M, R, and M. So that would select the pair of matching brackets or curly brackets, whichever you have. And you can change them to something else. Say if we want square brackets instead, I can do the left square bracket and that would change both the bracket on line 23 here. You can see now it's a square bracket and on line 34 here as well. So those has been changed. Of course, to undo this, we just press U. So this is quite useful as well. So hopefully these few new features and key bindings that I've just shared would be helpful for you. And if you have not already done so, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. It would help this channel out a lot. And also hit the like button as well. So that will let us know that you like this type of videos as well. And then as always, stay awesome and stay safe. Cheers.